Okay. I think... I also think the top of my head's being cut off, but that's okay. It's too late for that now. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring here uh, for just a second to make sure that I'm live. And assuming everything is going okay, which I think it should be, uh, welcome everyone to today's video, which is a live build. I'm going to be assembling a computer today. All the parts you see here cost about $700 total, and it's an AMD Ryzen system. This is suitable for gaming as well as multitasking, uh, and for anyone who's interested in building a desktop PC, especially if you're going to get into gaming and you've never done it before, I'm going to do this live, so who knows what might happen, but I'm going to be giving my best attempt at walking you guys through the steps one at a time, right here as I do it, and we'll see how things go. Uh, all that said, it does look like I'm live, so that's good. Again, sorry my head's chopped off, but that's okay. My focus was on the computer parts, not on me. Uh, but let's just get things started here by going over the parts one at a time. Uh, also, a quick word of warning, since I am doing this live, there might be dogs barking from time to time, and I might have some uh, extra noise happening outside since I am just re uh, reporting from my garage. But all that said, parts, uh, because you have to choose out the main parts for a computer before you put everything together. I usually classify all the parts that are needed for a modern day computer into seven categories. The first category is the processor. For that we have a Ryzen 5 1400 processor. This is a quad core. It's one of AMD's newest series of, of CPUs. Quad core with hyper threading, which means you get eight threads for your operating system or programs to work with for physical cores. And uh, it's been a very nice performer. It only costs you around $160 to $170 and it comes with a cooler in the box and we're going to be using that cooler today. Second piece that you're going to need is a motherboard. This is kind of the central piece that holds everything together with any computer. Uh, the motherboard we're using is the Asus Prime B350M-A. It's a micro ATX motherboard, which means it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit shorter that way than a full-size ATX board. And to go with it, I have a micro ATX case as well. B350 is a little bit more... Uh, inexpensive when it comes to the chipsets available for Ryzen processors. Uh, B350 will get you the most the, the most of the main functionality that you need. Uh, for instance, if you go up to X370, the main thing you're going to get is support for like two-way graphics cards, configurations, SLI, and Crossfire, that kind of thing, uh, which honestly isn't that big of a deal for most people, especially if you're building on a budget. Third thing is going to be, what should I, what should I say next? Uh, I said case, so let's talk about the case. Third thing is a case. You need a case. Holds everything everything together. Other than that, they wide, they have a wide range of prices. This is only about $40. It is a very inexpensive case by Cougar, the MG100. Micro ATX, so everything's going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit tinier footprint. And then um, beyond that, cases, like I said, can get really expensive. They can get 100 bucks. 200 bucks, uh, and you do get some nice features for that. For our purposes, we're going to be showing what it's like to work in a budget case, uh, but it's not really the case doesn't really affect performance, so there's not too much of a concern there. For memory, I have the Corsair Vengeance LPX. Uh, this has been a very popular kit to use with Ryzen because it's very compatible. You want to make sure that the memory you get is compatible with Ryzen, and Ryzen is kind of finicky with certain memory, especially if you want to run at higher speeds. This kit has proven to be very reliable, even when running at higher speeds. It's a 3000 speed kit, but you can run it at 2933 with just about all the Ryzen, CPU, uh, Ryzen processors that I have tried. All right, that's, that's what, four things? We have three things left. Uh, the power supply is the EVGA 500BQ. Power supply is another thing where you can get away with uh, cutting some corners and getting uh, a power supply that's a little bit less expensive. This is actually a newer one. Um, they have a 500B, an 80 plus bronze weight rated 500 watt power supply. It's been very popular for budget builders for quite a while because you can get it for about 35 to $40. This one is a new version, the BQ, which is all of the basic same internals as the 500B, except the cables look a little bit nicer. However, this one does cost about 10 or 15 bucks more. So if you're on a strict budget, just go with that 500B. Honestly, it's exactly the same thing. I just wanted to try this one out because I hadn't before and I was ordering all the parts literally today. I picked up like half of these parts from Newegg this morning and so that's what I went with there. Uh, for a graphics card, you do need a graphics card at least with this build because the CPU we're using doesn't have integrated graphics. Uh, the graphics card we're using is the RX 580. If you reference any of the links I've ha have done in the description for this video, you might notice I have some of the parts that are slightly different. I basically told you, you to find an RX 580 8 gig version that's as cheap as possible, and you can find that for about $220. This one from ASUS is a very nice version of the RX 580, but it does cost more towards $270 to $280. I'm using it because the one it's the one I have here. Also, I was really curious what kind of uh, 
This, this case is supposed to be able to handle GPUs up to 13 inches. This is about a 12 inch graphics card. It should fit. If it doesn't, I have backup options that are available. Uh, and then the final thing that we need is gonna be storage. Uh, for storage, I have an SSD because whenever I'm building a system now, I always go with an SSD. This is a SanDisk. Uh, in the description, I have the SanDisk Ultra Plus 240 gig. This is an Ultra 2. Honestly, it's not that huge of a difference, but for our purposes, it's gonna get the job done. I recommend a 240, 256 gig SSD to start with. And then since this isn't gonna be able to hold everything that we need, I always recommend finding an old hard drive, an old one or two terabyte hard drive that you have to add to this if you want some additional storage. If you don't have that, maybe consider dropping another 40 or $50 on a two terabyte hard drive, just to make sure that you don't run out of space on this SSD. But you want the SSD because that's what makes everything fast. All right, so now that those parts are all listed. I do have a couple optional parts for this build, and that is specifically because of the motherboard I chose, the case I chose, and the fact that you really want to pay some attention to airflow. Uh, I've added an extra uh, fan to this build, and I added a couple links in the description too, so you guys can find those. This is a Fractal 120, milli 120 millimeter Venturi fan. I did this because this case only comes with a single fan. I wanted to add another one uh, for an intake in the front. And then I also have a fan splitter right here because the motherboard actually only has one header on it to uh, plug in a case fan. So I want to use a splitter so we can plug this fan and the one that comes with the case both into the motherboard. Beyond that, I do have some equipment, of course, that I'll be using. I have a rubber mat. I'm going to be using that to build on just to keep things safe. And then I also have a screwdriver, standard screwdriver, small screwdriver. This is from my iFixit kit. Who knows if I'll end up digging into the iFixit kit. Uh, for more stuff during this video, but this is my uh, this is the one I got during during Scrapyard Wars. That was, that's why it's got my name on it. Uh, and then lastly, I have a knife to open things. And speaking of which, let's start opening things. That's like the fun part, right? It's actually opening things. By the way, if you're watching live, thanks to any of you guys who have happened to join. You guys are great people. Uh, I hope you wait what. Uh, I should use smoke smoke to check the airflow. I'm not going to be focusing on chat too much because my goal is really to show you guys how to build a system. And if I answer questions in chat, that's going to be distracting. But the first thing you want to do, of course, is get all of your parts unboxed. Now, I'm not expecting too crazy good packaging for this Cougar case because, again, it's a $40 case. And... It's 40 bucks, you know, like, you don't, you're not going to have probably a ton of really fancy stuff going on with this. But here's the best way to, to get a case out of the box. Open the top flaps, flip it upside down, watch for handles on the side if they exist. This one doesn't have them. And then slide it off like so. Prepare yourself for a brief electric shock. Static electric shock. Wasn't too bad this time around. And then we can remove the rest of the styrofoam. Get the case out. Okay. Sorry about that, headphone users. Getting the case out of the box is probably going to be the main point where I have problems with potentially hitting the, the mic, because the mic is right here. But hopefully that does mean that you guys can hear me okay. All right. Welcome, welcome. Once again, anyone who is joining live in chat. Wow. So the nice thing about an inexpensive case is it's also very lightweight. This is steel, but it's very thin gauge steel. So um, a case typically is going to have... Your I.O. points on the back, that's where the motherboard sticks out. Uh, this is where your power supply will mount, and that's where you plug in the actual AC power. These are some expansion slots down here for graphics cards. You have two side panels. This is the main side panel, and hey, good job, Cougar. These are plastic thumb screws, but they are thumb screws, and I like thumb screws. So we'll set those aside. Removing those thumb screws allows you to get the side panel off. Usually when you're building uh, with the system, wow, that is pretty thin. This is what you get when you pay $40 for a case. Not super thick stuff, but you know what? They've rolled some of the edges over here, so it's not too terrible. This does have some optional fan mounts here on the side, so you could pop fans on there to get extra air being pushed in directly onto your uh, components that might run a little warmer, like the CPU and GPU. For our purposes, we probably do not need that though today. This case, again, does come with a rear exhaust fan, which is 120 millimeter. That's nice. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, just going to start off by removing both of those side panels and setting them off to the side. We will come back to those later. All right. <laughs> it really is nice actually having such a lightweight case. Cases can be so cumbersome sometimes and this one I can just lift it up and toss it around. 
I do have also some different uh, camera angles to show you. So look, I can give you guys a top down if you want. I'll try to remember to switch between those from time to time. A uh, bag of case accessories, some plastic. Oh, it's got little feet. Are those feet? It does have feet. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is another little thing you get when you get a, a budget case. It does have little rubber pads for the feet, but they come they don't come pre pre-attached. You have to peel them off and stick them on the bottom. I kind of want to do that actually. Bear with me once for one moment while I attach these adhesive foam foam feet pads. Holy crap, I have 1700 people. Thanks to all you guys for showing up here. Um, again, if you're in live chat, I'm going to be glancing that at that from time to time, but I'm probably not going to be answering too many questions or that kind of thing because I'm trying to teach people how to build a computer on the fly. Something I've actually wanted to do for a while. I intended to do this video uh, several weeks ago, and then that was when my one of my GH4s video outs broke, so I had to kind of postpone it at the time. All right, so there's our case. We're going to set this aside for now. Let's go back to this little view. And we're going to prepare our motherboard by installing the CPU and memory and cooler onto it. Let's also set the graphics card aside for now. So here's our motherboard box. And we'll just pop this out. We got the motherboard. The main things we're going to need from here are going to be the motherboard. We will need a SATA cable. Those should come with your motherboard and we will use this to connect up the uh, SSD. And then your motherboard is probably also going to have a manual which you might want to pull out and set aside because you, there's a chance you might need to reference a couple things in there. And then finally you're going to want your IO shield which is a little piece of metal. Again budget case, budget motherboard, so this is very, very no frills uh, IO shield there, but it, again, we'll get the job done. And that's our goal for today, is to build a computer that has a lot of performance for not like crazy amounts of money. Builds I've been doing recently have been around a thousand dollar plus uh, price, and it's nice to do stuff that's a little bit more budget, because I know not everyone has that much money to spend. All right, so I'm also going to do a I'm going to try to keep things organized as I proceed along here. Let's give you guys the old top-down view. Punch in a little bit. Woo. All right. Look, I can focus too, maybe. Okay, cool. So first, get your motherboard out of the box, out of the protective anti-static bag that it comes in and uh, check it out. You know, uh, On the motherboard, you're going to have your socket. That's right there. That's where the CPU goes. There's an arm on the side. You lift the arm to install the CPU. Drop the arm back down to lock it in place. There's also this bracket right here, these two pieces. And these are actually uh, retention mounts for the, the heat sink fan that goes on top of here. However, the heat sink fan that we're using uh, is not going to use these. So I'm going to be removing these two little pieces. Also, these long slots here, that's for system memory, so we're going to be occupying two of the four. Usually, it's every other slot that you populate, but again, you can reference the motherboard manual for that, so I'm going to be occupying slot number, I believe, slot number two and slot number four here. There's some other plugs for plugging in power from the power supply, the long 24 pin here and the 8 pin right over here. And then these down here are expansion slots, so the big long one is where the uh, graphics card is going to go. Uh, and then down here along the bottom edge, you have places to connect other things, such as uh, the connectors for the case, like the front panel USB is going to plug into these little ports down here. Uh, you might also have a front panel audio header down there. And then these slots here are these uh, plugs, and these two plugs here are all SATA plugs, and that's where you plug in storage, uh, like an SSD or a hard drive, or even an optical drive if you're going old school and you have one of those. Finally, there's an M.2 slot right here. This is this narrow narrow little slot right there with uh, these mounting points. That's also for newer SSDs. We're not going to be using one of those today, but that's part of the reason I chose this motherboard is because you can install it with your SATA SSD like we'll be using. And then if you wanted to upgrade in the future, there's tons of ways to upgrade this system. One of them is to add a, an M.2 NVMe SSD, which you can drop in right there. Not too much to speak of on the back of the motherboard. But uh, do bear in mind that there's this back plate right here, and we're going to need to keep that, although it is going to come loose once we remove those four screws, which I'll be doing in just a moment, so we can properly mount our heat sink.
So, speaking of the heat sink and the CPU, let's get that out of the box. I put everything back in the boxes. A lot of this stuff has been used once or twice before, but I wanted to give you guys the, the full experience. So here we go. Fortunately, I have not yet used this CPU cooler, so you guys can get that experience too. When you install a CPU cooler to uh, cool the CPU, that's what CPU coolers are for, uh, you will need to put some thermal paste on there. The thermal paste provides a thermal interface between the CPU, which is going to get hot as it does work, and the heat sink, which absorbs the heat, then has a fan on it that uh, pushes air over those fins and disperses the heat. So, what we're going to need to do is make sure that our CPU is ready to go with thermal paste. And if I didn't have thermal paste pre-applied on here, like this circle of, of, of gooey stuff is actually thermal paste on there, uh, then I would need to actually add some. But when you're doing a first-time installation, you can use this pre-applied stuff. Just bear in mind, if you ever need to uninstall this and reinstall it or anything like that, you're going to need to get the proper stuff to clean that off and then reapply some thermal paste. It's not all that tough, but it is probably a uh, next stage of PC building if you've never done PC building before. All right. Here is our CPU installation. Let's get started with that. CPU is in this little clamshell case. We're going to grab it by the sides. They put a couple little notches in there to make that a little bit easier. On the bottom, you'll see a bunch of little pins. Those are delicate. You want to try your very best not to touch those or bend them or anything like that. And then uh, you'll want to pay close attention because there's a gold triangle on the bottom here. You can see it pretty distinctly on one corner. And that triangle is going to line up with a triangle that's on the edge of the CPU socket. Uh, it's, the triangle on the CPU socket is a lot harder to see, but it's right there, trust me. Only one corner has a little triangle notched into it. So all I gotta do is lift up a little arm, line up those triangles so they're both in the same corner, set the CPU gently on the socket, and if you've li lined everything up, it should just drop right in there. That is called a zero insertion force socket because you don't need to put any pressure on it. Lower that little arm back down, and that is how you install an AMD CPU. It's actually very, very simple. Um, if you're gonna have any difficulty with CPU installation when it comes to AMD, you're probably gonna have it when you uninstall it, but if you do this thing, if you do this right, you, you probably won't have to do that unless you maybe upgrade your, your cooler in the future. Now, as mentioned, this cooler uses the existing backplate that's on there, but it doesn't use these plastic brackets on the top. So that means that we're gonna need to pull those off. That's really simple. There's just four little Phillips head screws. So I'm gonna unscrew those. Also thinking I should grab my electric screwdriver at some point, because that does tend to make these videos go a little bit faster. And we'll remove all four of those. Okay. Now we have our heatsink fan. And we will want to pay attention again to where that thermal paste is going to be and not touching that. We have four mounting points, one, two, three, four, on the four corners. Those are going to mount up with the four mounting points on here. And then you can position this however you want. There's actually uh, some mods online to where you, to removing this plastic circle on the outside and rotating it uh, 45 degrees so the AMD logo's on the top. But honestly, you can do it either way. You can have it that way. You can have it that way. It doesn't matter. Let's do it this way. And we're just going to line up those four screws and start them all threading. And the idea is that you don't want to put a bunch of, you don't want to do one corner at once. Basically, I am just uh, getting each of these screws started to be screwed in. I'm barely threading each one just to get it started so all four points are kind of secure, but these are not screwed in yet. And then I'm gonna go opposite corners and give it two or three turns on each side just to make sure that uh, as it is being, uh, as pressure is being applied between the uh, heat, heat, heat sink fan and the CPU, that it's done evenly because you don't wanna put a bunch of pressure on one corner as opposed to the other. That's pretty much it. CPU's installed, heat sink fan is installed. Now we have this uh, plug for the fan. That's that's necessary. It needs to plug in so the fan will will, will spin and have power. Uh, those are usually pretty distinctly labeled. This one says CPU fan right here. So I'm just going to plug that in right now. And then we'll keep in mind that we have this little wire hanging off of here. Actually, an easy way to do this is to just kind of tuck it up under here. Again, there's a million different ways to do cable management but I find taking care of it right off the bat is a good way to do it. So yeah, all I really did was kind of wedge that in there so it's gonna stay in place. It's not gonna look bad and it's not gonna come loose. Uh, I could also have waited until I got this in the case to kind of tuck that away and everything, but uh, for now, it's getting the job done. All right, let's make things a little bit brighter. Maybe, if 
I can do this on the fly. Okay. <laughs> cool. Next up, we're going to do the memory. Memory. Okay. So memory, again, is fairly simple. Uh, it's just a couple sticks. It slots into these long slots right here. They are notched in the middle, so you can only install them one way. The notch is not directly in the middle of the memory. It's slightly offset. So basically, you got to look at these slots here. Look at that notch that's based there in the center of that. And uh, make sure that your, your memory notch is in the right place. So that would be wrong. I need to flip this around. There's a couple catches. on. Uh, sometimes they're just on one side. Sometimes they're on both sides of this. And uh, we just want to open those up and drop our memory down into the slots. And I'm going to put firm pressure on both sides of it, and it kind of snaps into place. You'll hear a very satisfying clicky sound as the latches kind of grab hold of that. And we have one more here. Goes in just the same way. And snap. There we go. All right, so memory is installed. CPU and CPU heatsink fan is installed. Uh, we're moving along quite well here. And in fact, I think all I'm going to do for the next minute or two is... Uh, Try to tidy, t keep things tidy if I can, but uh, just get a few more things out of the box. So let's switch back. Yeah, that's better. All right, so case is out. Actually, you know what? Before I even do any of that, let's get that fan installed on the front of this. All right, so when it comes to case fans, there's an open side of the fan, and then there's a, a closed side that has the supports and the brackets right there. Usually, this is the intake, and the part with the bracket is where the air gets pushed out. So since I want this to be on the front of the case, we have an exhaust back here. It's pushing air out that way. I want this to be on the front of the case right up here, pulling air in. So I just need to make sure that the exhaust part of that is facing back. And this uh, heatsink fan actually has arrows on it that will also show you the rotational direction of the fan blades as well as the direction of the airflow. And then we're just going to mount this up in front. It is a 120 millimeter fan, so uh, there's a 120 millimeter mount right up here, and that's pretty straightforward. It just sits right in there. I don't have a good way of showing you guys this, but I'm going to need to set it in here, and then I'm going to need to screw it in from the front. Okay. Most cases that have front panels like this will, you can remove them. Uh, you just got to grab from the front right down here, and actually this has a handle, which makes me feel like this is going to work, and you pull. And it feels like you're going to break, break something, but it pops off just like that. This is just a plastic facade that goes across the front, but getting that up allows us to access those four mounting uh, points for, that, uh, for the fan. And assuming I have fan screws, which I do, they came with the fan that I got, I'll just screw that in and get that mounted. I am going to grab my electric screwdriver though. I'll be right back. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Things are going well. So when I first planned out this build, because I actually planned this build out last month, and I wanted to build it. I've been wanting to build it, and it just kind of turned out that today ended up being a good day to do that. Um, but when I planned it out, I actually chose a different case. Again, it was a budget case. It was about a $40 case, but it was a, um, a thermal tape case. I just completely lost where I set those screws. Oh, there you go. Uh, I originally chose a thermal tape case for this, but uh, I didn't have that case, and I needed to get stuff this morning. So my cases were limited to something that would fit within the budget. About 40 bucks was micro ATX because I don't like doing a full-size ATX case if it's a micro ATX build. And then finally, it had to be available at Newegg for will call pickup. <laughs> so I did consider some Rosewell options. Uh, I considered the Fractal Core 1100. Uh, I've actually built in the Fractal Core 1100, so if you're, fam if you're interested in a build in that case, just check my channel and you should be able to find that. Uh, but since I had built in it before, I decided, you know what, let's try something new. Let's get this Cougar one going here. Used a few Cougar product products in the past. Again, inexpensive case, so there's lots of things that are just, you don't see with more expensive cases, like there's a bunch of hot glued stuff in the panel right here, and there's like a string of it that went across the USB port, which is really just an aesthetic thing, but 
All right, wanted to pull that off of there. Okay, beyond that, uh, this should be all I need as far as getting this front panel off, so I'm gonna pop it back on. But this would also be what you would need to do if you did want to install a five and a quarter inch drive up here, like an optical drive or a fan controller or something like that. You can also access these front panels here if you need to get at like the, the these are five and a quarter, quarter inch front panels and 3.5 inch front panels, so add-on stuff can be accessed right there. You could also pull this off if you wanted to, I don't know if modding or anything like that. But fairly simple to get on and off, thankfully. And this case does have a USB 3.0 and a USB 2.0 on the front, a uh, headphone and mic jack, and then a power and reset button. So all the basic functions you'd need. It's not super pretty, but, but when, you're, when you're on a budget, that's, this, is, this is the lesson of when I'm on a budget. This is where I skimp. I skip on stuff like the case that doesn't matter as much, maybe the CPU cooler. This is, this is the Wraith Stealth. It's not the best CPU cooler. Again, it's gonna get the job done. I would probably wanna up, upgrade that in the future if I wanted to. Um, so yeah. But like I said, I wanted to make sure there's plenty of ways to upgrade the system in the future. All right, I wanna get everything else out of the boxes just so I can clear some stuff out here. So let's get the graphics card going. I also wanted to do this build today because it's still May, May, it's May 18th as of doing this build and, and uh, streaming this video and I'm leaving for Computex next week so I'll be in uh, Taipei for, Taipei, Taiwan for 9 or 10 days and then I'll be back and then it will be summer and I'm probably not going to be able to do <clears throat> live builds from my garage during the summer simply because it's too hot so there we go all right so it's I'm getting getting stuff all over the place all right there is our gpu motherboard let's get the power supply out actually probably be good probably be good to get the power supply in first here since it's a top mount power supply so we'll do that where did my knife go Okay, my knife is directly in front of me. Yeah, once it hits, uh, you know, early June here, it gets really hot. So, I do have an air conditioner out here in the garage, but it's loud, so can't really do that at the same time. All right, I, I think it's kind of cool. I've been using a lot of EVGA power supplies recently, and EVGA just keeps coming out with, with well-placed power supplies, I feel like. This is, again, the newest iteration of the 500B. It's the 500BQ. There's a Q on the end there. And uh, why did they give me two sets of screws? No, they didn't. It's just taped inside the box. All right. Uh, the BQ version means it looks good. Uh, it actually has all black cables. So even though this is only partially modular, the modular power supply means that the cables come separately entirely, so you can unplug them and get rid of them if you're not actually using them. Uh, partially modular, but also all black cables. This one right now is about $55, um, although I feel like given EVGA's track record, you're probably going to be able to find it for less than that at some point. Um, and yeah, it's so not, you know, not that high end, not that powerful, only 500 watts, but 500 watts is all most people need for a standard gaming PC. And whenever we recommend the 500B, we always say, get the 500B, you're going to get, you know, the most for your money. Just remember those cables look hideous. These do not. They're all black. So there you go. Anyone who's looking for a budget power supply, maybe consider this one uh, if you're willing to spend an extra 10 bucks or so for making the cables pretty. All right. So our power supply, again, is going to go up in the top right up here and it mounts at the back with four screws and you'll notice your power supply has a fan on one side of it in this case in particular you definitely want to make sure the fan faces down it's going to pull air up out of the case and then push it out the back um, in some cases where the power supply mounts at the bottom you'd still want to have the fan facing down because there's probably a fan filter down there uh, or you can have it facing up too but honestly that's a debate I don't want to get too much into right now so let's just get this power supply up in there. Again, just four screws, and they probably come with your power supply. Sometimes your case will also come with uh, 
with the screws that'll work for this. And since they taped the screws into the case, the screws baggy is taped shut. Okay. Cool. How's things going in chat? Oh my god, there's over 2,000 people watching. This is crazy. You guys are crazy. It's only Thursday. I would expect more viewers in a midday on like a Saturday or something like that. But, yeah. Okay, two more of these. All right, and that should be held pretty securely up in the top, which you guys can't see yet. There we go. All right, so power supply's up in the top. Uh, this will allow us to at least see where the power supply is and get kind of a vague idea of where the cables are gonna start to go. There really is no cable management in this case. In a lot of uh, higher-end cases, if you're gonna spend 60, 70, 80 bucks for a case, you'll have room back here to tuck away your cables. We don't have that in this case, but it does mean the case is smaller. Uh, so since we also don't have an optical drive, I'm going to probably be pushing most of the extra cables up in here to kind of hide them if I can. And then everything else just routing down to the bottom to where it might need to get connected. Now we can at last drop the, uh, drop that motherboard in. There we go. And once you have the heatsink fan installed on a motherboard like this, you can, with some reasonable amount of assurance, hold the motherboard by that. Although you don't want to go, don't want to go swinging it around or anything like that. And of course, before you install your motherboard, you always want to install your I/O shield first. Okay. Uh, I/O shield should line up with the I/O on the back of the motherboard, and that means that the three small holes for the uh, three small holes for the audio outs are at the bottom. This is one of those kind of annoying IO shields because it's it's low budget and it's not sitting in this groove the way I want it to and it's also all metal which means I'm gonna cut myself if I push on it too much. So I'm gonna use the butt end of my screwdriver and I'm going to from the inside Push on that to hopefully pop it into place, and I have I have recommended this little technique multiple times before, and who knows, it might actually act even work. Maybe. Come on. Where'd you go? There we go. Aha. All right. And once that's in, it should stay. Should. Hopefully. Maybe. Okay. Trying to remember to refocus as I move around. All right, uh, this is the I.O. on the motherboard. We're gonna kind of angle that into the case. Dropped, oh, you know what? I can't do that yet. What am I telling you guys? This is supposed to be a tutorial. All right, <laughs> another thing about cases is they have to have standoffs, which are small little screws that sort of provide a little bit of gap between this uh, metal plate that we're attaching the motherboard to and the motherboard itself. Again, a lot of cases will come with those pre-installed. This case is not one of them, though. Again, budget case. They make you do a little bit more of the manual labor. So the standoffs, I'll try to give you guys a slightly better view of this. The standoffs look kind of like this. Focus. The standoffs look like that. <laughs> they're very tiny. Uh, they're usually made of brass. And uh, they're going to have probably, there's going to be between five and nine of them, depending on the size of your case and everything. I always recommend double checking which uh, screw type these uh, actually work with first, which appears to be the, wow, that's interesting, which appears to be neither, <laughs> neither of these, none of these types of screws will work with these standoffs. That's doesn't make sense. This probably means it's the thin thread. Because I tried that at first. All right, so it wants the thin thread. There's a thin thread and a rough thread. It wants the thin stuff. So we get the glorious job now of taking 
the same number of these as our motherboard has standoff points, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. And from there, I don't know if you guys were able to see that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll need to install standoffs into the appropriate locations that match up with that on the motherboard. So this might take just a moment or two. Another nice thing that you can sometimes get is a standoff uh, nut. But again, this case did not come with that. Do I? I might have one of those over here. Hold on. Never mind, I don't. Would be nice, but I do not have that. All right. There's two. There's four more. One, two, three, four. Cool. The first four that go in are the same standoffs that uh, every motherboard uses. The top left, the one just below the IO shield, this one, and this one. And those are the same mounting points that a mini ITX motherboard would use. There we go. And usually every single motherboard has at least those four. And we want the two just to the south. All right. There's that one. Here's this one. If this was something that I actually realized, I might have done this before I started filming because this is the part screwing in the screws that is not quite as entertaining, but there you go. All right. This is also interesting. They tied, they tied the cable for the fan, the exhaust fan, in a knot. I'm just going to loosen that up. So this fan, uh, we're going to plug into the, the that header on the motherboard, but we'll worry about that later. For now, let's just get that motherboard installed. Okay. So I usually put the IO in first. Just try to push that up against that IO shield and line it up so everything kind of sticks out. Aha. I'm not sure how well you guys can see, but probably better if I switch cameras. So there's the IO right there, and it just pokes through. Uh, and then I give, I, give, I give it a nice push up against that I.O. to hold it in place, and that will uh, theoretically align at least one of those standoff points that I just set up. And then we take our screwdriver, theoretically, again. All right, and there's one. Once you get one in, it'll hold it in place. I usually leave that one a little bit loose so uh, the other stuff doesn't... is. You know, you can line, can jiggle it a little bit and line it up in case they are off center. But again, five more screws. And let's see how fast I can do this. Okay. I'm trying to use my iFixit screwdriver because, yeah, there we go. The iFixit screwdriver has a little, Put you put your palm on the end of it and then you can twist it. It's kind of nice. Okay. is three no that's four no that's three I can't count that's four and <laughs> five one more okay If you guys wonder why I don't do these types of vid videos more often, as far as the live builds, it's because they can be tedious from time to time, or at least a little bit slower moving, <laughs> if you haven't already noticed. And uh, yeah, when, whenever I make a build and edit it, I almost always, uh, you know, don't dwell too long on the screwing in the motherboard part. All right, I am now going to plug in my little fan splitter here into the single fan header, which is kind of back towards the back here, and this is going to allow me to get the fans plugged in um, and actually I might have a little bit of an issue because that fan uh, point the, the 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 plug is right here which is kind of an, an awkward point 
spot. It's fairly close for me to plug in this rear fan, but the front fan, I need to wrap that cable over for it. And the cable's only so long. I mean, not, not terribly short or anything. So I'm actually thinking I might just run this along the bottom, bottom edge, like underneath, and tuck it back up behind the graphics card. So I'm gonna plug that in now. And then the idea will be that I can sort of uh, push that out to the side and get it cable managed properly once I actually uh, get the graphics card in there. Okay, I'm also going to try my best to kind of wrap up this other uh, fan plug for the exhaust. And get that tucked up out of the way. Cable management is one of those things that's just you, you got to do it a bunch of times to sort of figure out little tricks here and there to, to get better or worse at it or that kind of thing. And, you know, just don't give yourself a hard time over it or about it like the first time you're, you're getting it done because nobody's system is going to have perfect cable management the first time around. That's just that's just not going to happen. I'm also going to use that as an excuse to not do the greatest cable management here because I don't want to, you know, I want to set the bar too high or anything. I'm just going to tuck that. Tuck that in there, and hold on. I need to clip. I need to clip that. Okay, I'm using some wire clippers. That's my other tool. I did use a twist tie down there, a metal twist tie, which uh, you can use in your system for cable management. But I recommend using them sparingly because they do have metal in them. Only use them if they're properly covered up and everything. Like uh, you know, you got they're they're don't use them if they have exposed metal. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, motherboard's installed. Woo! Happy about that. Power supply's installed. Let's get some, some stuff plugged into the motherboard, because if you hadn't noticed, from our case, we have a grip of cables coming off right there. There are these little guys, which are front panel connectors for power reset uh, LED activity lights. There's a USB, there's a audio, and there's a USB 3. We need to plug all these in if we want all this stuff on the front panel to actually work properly. So again, just going to kind of bring these up in here, plug them in one at a time, and then figure out where in the case I can sort of move stuff around to tuck the cables back away however I can. And there we go. Let's try to focus. That's better. Maybe one day I'll get a camera person who can adjust the camera for me so I don't have to stop talking to do it. All right. It's also getting warmer by the minute out here with all the lights on. Don't worry though. I can, I can muddle through. All right. Power cables. We have two extra modular cables we're going to plug in. One of these is going to be uh, what is known as PCI Express graphics cable uh, power cables. They're usually six pin plug blocks or six plus two pin plug blocks. Uh, one side goes into the power supply itself. Usually where it says VGA if you're plugging in VGA cables. And so then we have one more modular power supply cable to add. This one is the SATA plug. So this is really solely going to be to plug in power to our uh, serial ATA drive, although this does have multiple plugs that come off the end of it here, which means that uh, if I added more drives, I could still use a single cable to plug in up to three of those. And again, modular plug, this time the one that's labeled SATA. All right, hang those out there. Now a good question here is gonna be, how the heck am I gonna mount my SSD? Because I don't know if there's even a 2.5 inch drive mount in this in this case, uh, I might have to figure something out for that. I might have to mount it. I might have to be, get creative down here towards the bottom or something like that. The nice thing about SSDs, um, this is a 2.5 inch drive, which means it needs a 2.5 inch drive mount. And what I'm looking at in here is mainly these five and a quarter inch mounts up here or 3.5 inch mounts down here. I need something smaller. SSDs have no moving parts though or anything like that. So they're pretty durable, uh, which means I have like I've mounted an SSD into a case just with like Velcro, and it stays where it's where it's where it should and, and all that kind of stuff. Not a big deal. 
But I think what I'm actually going to do, just to get some improv imp improvisation going, is just mount it to this bottom piece here, because there are potentially some screw holes right there that would work just fine. In fact, I think I'm going to do that right now. Uh, where did my... Damn it. Ah. If you can't already tell, I'm very good at losing screws and screwdrivers and stuff as I'm building. It's all part of the game. All right. By the way, it is entirely possible that this case does have a 2.5 inch mount that I'm just completely unaware of. But we'll save that for later. Okay. Dogs. Sorry about the dogs. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, I was I had to make sure it wasn't a pizza or something like that. It was just a delivery, but they dropped it off. Okay, let's move on to plugging in the cables. Since I have everything lined up, SSDs in there mostly shouldn't move. All right, front panel connectors are the worst connectors. They suck. Everyone hates them, uh, and they're terrible. But uh, you should have four typically in here: power switch, reset switch. Uh, power LED, hard drive LED. LEDs will say plus and minus on them, and those do matter. Um, what is plus and what is minus? The hard drive ones, uh, the the uh, I'm sorry, the power and reset switch, not so much. Uh, sometimes you can see labeled on the motherboard itself where to plug them in, and if you can't make that out, or if you just want to double check, here's where you will uh, definitely want to double check the mother motherboard manual. Find F panel, front panel, system panel connector, something like that, and that'll point to you where each of those little plugs are. And we hate them. Oh, we hate them. All right, we have power switch. Power switch. No, oh, that's LED. What's going on? Why would they do that? It's confusing. Okay, let's do power LED. Plus is on that side, okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's another one of those things that I uh, don't typically show the full process of when I'm doing standard video. All right. I have two of the four connected. I'm now adding light. Or that reset switch. And the hard drive LED. Positive should go on the same side. All right. I Oh, don't play with it. Right. It's teasing me. Okay. <laughs> Those are connected. Thank God. All right, that's the most hateful part of any computer build. Let's move on. All right, front panel audio and USB plugs are pretty much the same little 10-pin blocks. Uh, they have one pin blanked out. It's in a different spot. Don't try to get these confused and plug one in where the other is supposed to go. Usually, it's pretty easy to, to tell the difference again because of that difference. Uh, safety key pin but that's not to say no one has ever tried to plug these in the wrong way before now we got USB here we go and lastly that's big old 
USB 3.0 right there. And I'm realizing that I could have done better top-down lighting today, but too late for that now. Okay, we will crank the ISO. Cool. All right. So those are plugged in at the bottom, and I'm not sure how well you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can see that, but that's that's pretty bad down there. There's just all these cables coming off. But uh, we'll worry about that later. Basically, I'm going to try to take all this excess. I'm going to try to push it all towards the front as much as possible, and then bundle it all up up there somewhere. But uh, we'll worry about that later. In the meantime, let's get those power plugs connected. Again, we've got two of those, which I pointed out earlier in the video. Uh, one is the big one, the 24 pin, and then the 8 pin, which is up at the top. Oh, I'm really glad I made that brighter. That's way better. Okay. 24 pin we'll do first. There's a catch on one side of the plug. I'm sorry you guys can't see the plug very well because it's being blocked by the drive cage. But uh, it goes like this. Ooh. Here's a situation where the uh, edge of the motherboard because it's kind of sticking out here. It doesn't have very good support. So I definitely want to, I'm kind of wrapping my fingers underneath the bottom of the motherboard as I plug the power plug in just to make sure I don't flex it too much. Motherboards are fairly durable. I don't want to say they're like super durable, but um, you definitely want to avoid cracking or breaking the PCB because that is something that can happen if you put too much force on them. All right, just kind of wrap that around a little bit so some of the excess can be tucked away. Now we have that 8 pin which is right up here at the top. Oh, where'd it go? Over here. Bada bing. Alright, that's in. Alright, so only two more plugs coming off the power supply and stuff uh, that need to be plugged in. Again, this double one for the uh, graphics card and this triple one that's SATA which is for the uh, SSD. Actually, I forgot the SSD is already there, so uh, let's plug that SATA one in. Okay. Uh, SATA plugs are kind of L-shaped, both on the uh, data cable itself, as well as the power cable. So you can only plug them in one way, but again, they are fairly delicate, so don't try to force it one way or another. This is the data cable, so this is just a connection between the SSD and the motherboard. So one end goes to the SSD, other end down here into the motherboard, like so. Cool, and then uh, we just got the graphics card. So, all right, graphics card, again, goes in this long slot and there are two uh, expansion slots here at the back. Now this is the type of case that the expansion slots are just little little metal pieces that you pop off. So um, it, you gotta figure out how to do that, I guess. Which I want a flathead screwdriver for, I can't find. There it is. Okay, I am just using a screwdriver to kind of get these started. And you just kind of bend them and they, they pop off. They're not replaceable, so try to make sure that you're removing the right ones. For this particular case, I'm removing the two middle. There's four down here, and I'm, I'm removing the two of them that are uh, in the middle again. And then uh, graphics card's just going to drop in right there. So here we go. GPU. Uh, make sure that you remove anything from the graphics card before you install it that uh, might be packaging. A lot of them, if they have a nice black plate, will have one of those on there. You can pull that off and save it for, for the future. They might have little covers on the plugs, like your uh, PCI Express connector there. Sometimes they'll also have plugs covering up the I.O. on the back. I already removed those from this one. And then uh, other than the PCI Express plug that's going to go in that slot, I.O. ports, which are going to go towards the back. And then uh, there's one power plug on here, PCI Express graphics power or PEG, and uh, you're going to want to pay attention to where that is as well. So just aligning this with the slot, dropping it straight down in. And 
and sometimes it kind of snaps in other times it just kind of sits and rests in the slot this one's just kind of sitting and resting there that's fine and then uh you'll have oh wait it's not it's not all the way down in there what am i talking about yeah that's better uh and then of course we need some screws to screw in the back which i believe these should fit This entire big old graphics card will be held in with two screws. Makes perfect sense to me. I mean, it is usually the most expensive part of the computer. In this computer it is. This graphics card costs about, well, $220 to $280, depending on what version you get. Uh, whereas the CPU in here costs about $160, $165 right now. So, there you go. Again, links to all the parts I'm using today are down in the video's description as well as a PC part picker list if you guys want to check them all out. I tried my best to update them all so that they're accurate with what I'm building today. And since this graphics card only has a single plug, that gives us a little bit more flexibility with our cables here, but just lining that up, plug that in. That again has a little catch that will hold and kind of snap into place. And then from there, it's just a matter of trying to tuck the cables away. All right, so give you guys a look at the build. Because you know what? I'm almost done. Not too bad. It's only been about an hour. Uh, all right, so again, cables is, it's, it's like, there's not a lot of places to put them in here. But here's what you want to focus on when it comes to the cable management with this build. Remember, you got a fan right here. It's going to be pulling in air from the front. That's going to be supplying some air down here to the graphics to the GPU, which is has its fans on the bottom, as well as some air up here into the main area so that uh, the CPU can keep cool, so that the power supply has some air to pull through it, and then exhausted by this fan in the back. So it's just kind of a matter of, of, of reality checking where stuff is, and then doing your best to take the extra cables wherever that might be, and tying them back as best you can. Again, there's no exact science or exact specific way you should do this every time. Some cases have very specific ways that they have been built, so you can very clearly see, oh yes, here's where the cables are supposed to go. Other times it's just a matter of like, hey, where can I find some space and some room to, to shove those cables and make it work? Uh, my main issue actually as far as looks goes is right now is at the top up here but uh there we go all right obviously this isn't going to win any awards on pit my pc um but for the most part it is it is complete so let's <laughs> i'm just trying to do like the most simple push it to the side cable management that I can, since I don't really have a lot of zip ties and twist ties lying around here. All right. This one I might like secure down there a little bit more. Let's, let's spend like a couple seconds on this. This eight pin is bothering me. This can be better. If you can tuck stuff behind the motherboard tray, that is a perfectly viable option. So that, that helps. All right. I, I don't know how much that did, but there we go. Yay, cables sort of managed. Again, this case is so, it's just so small and easy to move around and transport and stuff. All right, let's do the uh, final bit here, which is turning this stupid thing on. I'm going to put this side panel back on. Wait. Yes, yes, that side panel is on. I'm not gonna put this side panel on though, because that is uh, PC building superstition. If you put that panel on, then the system won't boot properly. All right. I do have a power cable down here. Power goes in. Let's forget which way the switch is. Yeah, switch should be on. Power button, which is power. Right. Woo! Aha! All right, so 
Ah, so see, here's here's one of the issues of GPU sag. The GPU sag is sagging into the cables at the bottom. So, all right. There's my build. Now, what I would do at this point is obviously those uh, were, there were some fan conflicts down here at the bottom. Again, that is uh, purely down to the cable management, which I could pull back a little bit more. Uh, depending on the situation with this graphics card, I might even have to do something like pull the graphics card out and get those uh, secured down to the bottom a little bit more, just because there's quite a few of them all plugging in along the bottom there, and one of them at least was conflicting with the GPU fans. You can't hear it anymore because this graphics card, when there's no load on it, the fans don't spin at all, so that's why it stops. But it works. We got some LEDs going in there. Uh, we have, yeah, everything else is spinning. Front fan is spinning. Rear fan Rear exhaust fan is spinning as well. So I would call that a successful build. I wouldn't say it's completely finished, of course, uh, but that wasn't really my goal today. My goal today was to get it all put together. After this is when you get on to the finishing touches and the polishing phase, where you maybe go back in there and redo the kill management, pull stuff back a little bit more. But everything is functional now, so I would, of course, plug this into a monitor, uh, get into the BIOS, perhaps do a BIOS update, make sure the memory is being recognized, make sure everything is in there. If you guys are actually building this computer, which who knows, maybe some of you are, uh, then I would definitely recommend going to my next video, uh, which would be the first five things to do after you've built a new computer. That goes over stuff like checking the BIOS and seeing that the uh, uh, settings are the way that they should be, making sure the BIOS is updated, make sure, making sure your drivers are updated, uh, and just the basic steps to getting like Steam installed and all that kind of stuff uh, and getting up and running. Because often when you get to this point, people don't know where to go next. So I'll post a link to that uh, video if I remember down in the description of this video. And uh, thanks to all you guys who are watching, who have tuned in live. Uh, I hope this hasn't been too chaotic. And uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go maybe, maybe see if I can get Windows installed on this system. This has been my $700 Ryzen build. Thanks you guys again so much for watching. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Huge thanks to all you guys who tuned in live. And I'm already taking too long to end this video. So I have to go over here and click a thing now. Don't mind me, just clicking this thing, okay.